Guten Morgen und welcome to Steve's Project Car Garage. My name is Steve and today we are going over to my buddy Chris's house to go work on his 1971 Volkswagen Deluxe bus. He's going to be doing some painting on it today so I'm going to be tagging along so that way he can go ahead and show me a few things and a little bit of the tips and tricks he's picked up along the way. Enjoy! Hey, welcome back to the project. This is Chris. You guys know him from one of the previous videos, and this is his 1971 Volkswagen Deluxe bus. Yeah. So, Chris, what are we going to be doing today? We are spraying white above the belt line. Uh, the first coats go in on nicely, but, you know, I'm not the world's best painter, and so I knocked that down, had a couple of places where some primer came through and a couple corners that needed fixed. So I did all that, and now we're just going to put a couple of coats of finish gloss white on. Awesome, and you're gonna kind of show me uh, how to paint because I've never painted before other than with a rattle can. I'm gonna show you how I paint. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll start at the top. We'll do the inside of the of the gutter up here. This is really kind of a hard shot to do because we'll be spraying up underneath and then up inside all these cracks. That's a slow job, but mostly this is going to be all edge painting around everything. So it's kind of slow. All the orange is much harder because it's a huge volume. But, so we're gonna walk all these edges and try not to get drips. Awesome. And how much time and prep work have you put in just with masking everything off? And because I mean, this looks like you spent a lot of time, a lot of detail. It takes a very long time to mask this car because there's a lot of edges and this includes some inside and outside trim. So it's been probably, I'd say I have about eight hours in masking alone uh, to wow. do this. And then the probably about another eight just in flattening out the paint and getting it cleaned up and ready to paint again. That's incredible. You said it's probably going to take us only all of 20 minutes just to spray oh, what we need, right? If it takes you more than 10% of the job to do the painting part, you haven't prepped. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for the recap. We're going to go ahead and get suited up, and then we're going to get some paint mixed, and uh, we'll take you along for the ride. Yep. This one isn't nearly as much fun to stir as the orange. <laughs> Looks like milk until you get it going. That's pretty thin. It stirs up fast. Yeah, it separates very quickly. You gotta really work it. Just from yesterday, it's already settled out mostly. This is the solids. There's a lot of solids in here. You don't worry about uh, air exposure and not transferring it to another can? No, this is uh, two part paint nothing cures until it mixes with the other stuff okay the other kind of paint is water cures the silver primers and stuff they cure with the with the humidity in the air okay. See, I believe, yeah three to one i don't know how much i'm gonna mix i'm just gonna mix a full five so my three to one mixer here i'm gonna mix to here with the white and there with the activator 1600 slow okay So here at this point, Chris was starting to go ahead and mix the paint up. This is something that was pretty neat because I've never actually seen it done before other than just watching a couple of YouTube videos. But he was able to go ahead and explain the chart on the side of the paint cup, which was always kind of a bit of a mystery to me. This is not quite as precise as epoxy. Mixing epoxy, you don't want to be different by more than the thickness of the line. But with activated paint. Here you can see that Chris is using a brand of paint called Kirker. He was able to get this from a website, uh, which is autobodytoolmart.com. Uh, I went ahead and I did check out, they had a bunch of cool different paints there and uh, definitely might be something that's worth checking out for anybody in the future. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, now that it's going to get stinky, we go in the airbox. Alright. Now, well, that inducts, like I said, it has no official induction time, but I like to go to five minutes to kind of set up. I'll stir it again. And you can actually feel the texture change a little bit as it, as it like, cures. Does it get harder? It gets thicker, like, the difference between stirring like skin milk and whole milk. 
So at this point the paint has settled for about two or three minutes and Chris is now going ahead and filling out the paint gun. He's only going to put about maybe a quarter of the amount of paint that the volume can actually be held in that paint gun. And uh, you'll see how far this paint actually goes. Here Chris is just spraying a couple of test powders to kind of get the gun dialed in a little bit. He uh, took a little bit of time to check in and play with the different fan settings as well as get his pressures dialed in. This is something that does obviously change throughout the entire painting project, but he likes to get a good baseline to start. Now is that just to dial in your pattern? I'm out of paint mostly right now. Yeah, I don't want to soak it too bad. And I'm trying to think about how much paint I need to get the inside in there. With the speed I can move on a ladder, you know? So I don't want too much, but I don't want too little. So I want to get just enough to get a little bit of blow off in the middle. And not so much air that I have a huge fan. See, if I turn it all the way down, I get a really small fan. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of over. And that's kind of what I want when I'm doing some of these. Then I got to have my paint off here. So too much pressure gives you a, a, a narrower fan? This is the fan button. This okay. controls how much air is coming out of these little horns. And so how much it spreads the fan out. See, if I turn it all the way down, you get a knot. Ah. Oh. Then if I turn it all the way up, there's something that's all spread out. I want to be somewhere down small because I'm just doing this side of that. And if I control my overspray. And so what does the, con uh, the knob on the bottom do? Is that pressure? Total, no, that's total amount of amount you can pull the handle back. Oh, okay. So if I turn it way down, I'm going to get a little bit of paint. That's how you it. They're broken. Oh, okay. If I turn it all the way up, then the needle comes all the way out. You just got to now, it's somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm going to try that. So here we really kind of start taking off with painting on the bus. Chris was showing me how he uses the light throughout the process to kind of keep an eye on what's called the wet edge. The wet edge is really what gives you that ability to figure out where your wet paint is actually being laid versus overspray. What I'm trying to do there is just catch the underside of it. So the top of my pattern is under the lip. And now when I go back, it'll cover both of them and I should get some blend on it.
Now I notice you're not doing any of this kind of technique on the edges. What's that all about? Because I'm doing it with my finger. Ah. So that's just all about feathering it out then, right? Yeah, and you don't want any hard edges, but I've got mama edges also soft paint. This is one part I didn't paint before at all. You can see the primer. If you look underneath over there, you'll see primer. That paint goes a pretty far away. I've used about almost a half what I poured in here, so maybe almost a quarter of what we mixed. That's not bad. Yeah, all it does is one way. And it goes fast compared to professional, like, high quality paint. Okay, now here's one of the things I learned. On these edges. Ah. Make my pattern more horizontal. Paint like this. It was here painting this back corner where Chris started to run into some issues with some drips. We talk about them a little bit later on at the end of the video. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this stuff a try. Let's see how I do. So after we got that first coat of paint done, we did go ahead and actually spray two more coats on for the bus in total. So we actually had three total coats of paint. Uh, so Chris had a little bit of leftover paint that he had mixed up and was gonna to go to waste. So he thought he'd go ahead and uh, let me try my hand at using the spray gun. This was a first for me. I had never actually worked with a professional spray gun like this before. Everything I'd ever done before always came out of a rattle can, so this was a real treat. I look forward to being able to actually use this in the Spitfire when I do eventually get to that stage. I'm going to try a second coat. As expected, the second coat of paint did go on a little bit easier than the first coat. And really all that you're doing is just adding some additional paint, which is going to help fill in areas that were a little bit lighter before. 
Chris also let me go ahead and use the light to really kind of get an idea and see what that wet edge that he was talking about is all about. You really don't notice the wet edge so much when you're working with your very first coat of paint. When your second coat of paint comes on, because you're painting the exact same color as what you've just painted, it is a lot harder to see. So use the light to get a better idea of your coverage and see that actual wet edge. Pretty cool. When you ever test to see if the paint's dry, you put your finger in it, touch it here on the tape. Not the actual, yeah. <laughs> but your brain won't do that. Your brain will be like, is that paint dry? <laughs> So now here comes the fun part. Paint has pretty much dried. We were able to go ahead and jump out of our bunny suits and uh, start peeling back the tape. Now Chris said he'd spent about eight hours or so taping this up, so just to be able to go ahead and remove the tape in the course of just a few minutes was actually quite amazing, considering the amount of work that goes into putting it on. All right, well, that just about wraps it up. Uh, Chris, thanks so much for uh, letting me uh, see the experience and, and, and you know, see what painting's all about. <laughs> if you'll suffer through it, you're welcome. Here. <laughs> no, it was cool. So is there anything that uh, you, you uh, felt you could have done differently on this uh, paint job or as far as the well, quality, how it came out? I wish I hadn't painted it while it was pouring out rain outside. That's one problem. Yeah, it uh, did start raining a couple times throughout the whole process. So You know, but I've got, being Florida, I've got six water traps on this line in line uh, right now so it did a good job i didn't see any liquid being caught in the, in the traps closest to the gun but it's still humid and there were a lot of times when the paint just wasn't sitting right because of how fast it is and they don't make converter for 85 degree temperatures and so we were painting as quick as we could um, other than that i think it went smoothly where it went smoothly the paint goes on really nice and uh, easy my gun was running smoothly today yep. it was easily dialing in um, you know everything else went great i'm going to keep steve around because he's fantastic as a helper uh, <laughs> i just i never light. had a third hand when doing this before and it was so nice just to have lights and hoses just kind of appear where they need to appear <laughs> normally i'm scuttling around like a crab taking care of all this stuff on paint well, it was cool because I was able to actually see what you're talking about, the wet edge, yeah. and, and how to follow that and trace you gotta that. you got to be right in there to see what's happening. And being white on white, especially for future uh, future things, running the LED right nearby was handy even when you were running it. That really gave me a break on the arm, you know, holding that heavy gun and the heavy light, you know, working <laughs> it. I'd get a lighter light, I think, for doing that more. I just, like, got to have all the light in the world. Yeah, you know? oh, for sure. super bright. And, I mean, you have some great lighting in here, too. You've I've got done everything I can. But yeah, it's not enough to work a wet edge on a white on white gloss, you know, and not this paint. It oversprays so fast and it's so it's so dry almost instantly. So you have to work close unless you really thin it out. And on a vertical edge like this with all edges and corners, I was going to do that. So you so, got you got some sanding to do to cut up on some of those uh, those, those little drips there. But well, like I said, I'm not the world's best painter, but I'm good at sanding. <laughs> and I can go at it slow, and because it's single stage paint with no clear coat, normally if this was clear coat, wet like this, we'd just be spraying clear coat right now, right over the top of it. Yeah. And, you know, because it goes on wet, and, you know, we might clean up a few little drips or something, but it would just go on wet. Now with single stage, I can wait till those dry tomorrow or the next day, actually probably the end next weekend, I'll bust them down with some 600, get them flat with the uh, Mondo on them, and then 1000 grit on pretty much everything just to kind of take out the any little bits of orange peel and work that down and then we're going to buff it all out. So I've done the orange down to 600 or 800 pretty much everywhere and then I'll do the same on the white to, to 800 or 1000 and then I'll just buff everything. You can't buff the orange and the white at the same time your white turns orange and your orange turns white. Yeah, you don't want to do that. No. So I'll be retaping it all plastic. I'll flip the plastic upside down and redo it and then uh, that'll be the end of the painting hopefully. Cool. 
Well, again, I appreciate it. I uh, look forward to being able to sit down and have a conversation with you about the entire <laughs> project. Uh, what is your estimated time frame for getting this completed on the road? You know, Steve, every time I try to, to think about that, it messes me up. So yeah. I try not to put something down like that. I try to think in the next three or four things I'm working on, and I set myself a goal on those. Because if I say I'm going to have it running by the end of the year, then I know I'm going to short out on something or something. Life's going to happen. And... Well, or I'll be like, to meet this deadline, i got to cut a corner. i got to not do something a second time. You know, i gotta, I got to be okay with something. Now I'm just like, well, the paint took a while with the paint. Now i got to finish doing the buffing and everything. I've got an electrical system i got to put in. So I want to have the electrical system in by the end of the month. I mean, by the end of the, the summer and the motor back in it so that I can run a power test. That's that means that I need to get you your, your engine hoist back. <laughs> no, I don't need engine hoist for the, for the motor. You, know, you can't use the engine hoist. That's true, car. yeah. So uh, when I use when I have my Beetle, I use the engine hoist to lift the car off the motor, not the motor out of the car. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, this one goes in on skateboard. Just, nice. Just slides in the back. But I want to get a power front to back. Maybe not all the lights and all the interior, but I want to get a new harness in it. That's my next, that's my next hard goal. By the end of the summer, I want to be done with that. Have new electricals and should be starting to put in things like interior trim you know inside this dome lights i'll be maybe looking at doing the headliner and stuff next you know so Step forward. probably not 2021 but 2022 maybe depends how fast it goes and what else yeah. is happening in my life <laughs> <laughs> well cool well thanks again best of luck on the rest of the project we'll check in periodically thanks, and uh we'll check in with you guys later cheers